Okay, so it is Monday, the 16th of January, um, about two o'clock in the afternoon here in the city of Cusco, and I'm just gonna try and give a quick update. Um, so far, within the city proper, things seem pretty calm. Public transit is running, taxis are running, most stores appear to be open. Um, what's in stock at stores seems to be a little bit variable because there are still a lot of roadblocks um, on all the strategic roads in and out of Cusco, which there's not a long, long list of those roads. Uh, for the most part, out in the more rural communities surrounding Cusco, folks are gathering to make their journeys and convoys into Lima for what on Thursday has been called for a national day of protest. Um, that's for Thursday the 19th, um, and thousands and thousands of people are joining convoys to go to Lima. Uh, in some major protest staging areas, you see people receiving donations of food and money and water and other supplies. Uh, there's a lot of logistics being coordinated to get people on the road, um, whole tour companies and travel companies that are largely indigenous owned are <clears throat> are donating their fleets of vehicles and their resources in order to transport people and the folks who are running roadblocks are saying that they're obviously going to let all of those protesters move through they are going in convoys for more safety is the thinking and um for better organization because that way like there's less risk that like one group of people may end up straggling getting lost or potentially not being good actors and then there's also less risk that uh, people can make the accusation that it was protesters who did something that was actually an act of vandalism or crime um, being concealed as uh, supposedly protesters. Um, so all of that is, is happening, is going on. Um, so yeah, um, there should be a pretty large protest in Lima by Thursday, but it is going to be national strike. So that's going to be everywhere according to what everybody is saying now everybody was saying up until you know like 10 o'clock last night that they thought today was going to be pretty strong in the city of cusco and in the part that i'm in so far it has not been um so you know there's that uh, I, there's still people with tents sleeping outside at plaza tupac uh, a few blocks from where i live and uh, that's where they're doing a communal kitchen, cooking large amounts of food for people who are protesters who are, uh, who are staying here. So they're making sure that stuff is handled from a logistics perspective, like that kind of thing. Um, these are really quite organized protests and not small scale. So this is not like a handful of delinquents just flipping out and losing it um and whatever this is very organized and very coordinated um one of the things that i really want to point out is that uh quechua people uh, who i know well since that's who i grew up with for the most part um are some of the world's finest organizers of labor and community efforts and ventures and they have been since back to Inca times and further back than that and a lot of those uh, systems of self-governance and uh, self-maintenance of infrastructure and all of that sort of thing still function in the indigenous communities um, without much in the way of problems and so it is not hard to take a group of people who know how to set up and feed several thousand people um, associated with running a dance troupe and coming through to see it over the course of uh, a weekend or three days. It is not hard for that team or teams of those teams to then get together and feed, you know, uh, large protest groups and handle all that kind of stuff. So, um, so there's a lot to be said for all of that in terms of uh, the ability. A lot of people um, are being dismissive of the ability of people from the rural parts of Peru to get to Lima and stage massive protests. And I, I think that's a mistake. I think if people are being dismissive of that, it is because they do not know Quechua people. And, you know, I can't claim to know Aymara people or Ashaninka people um, or any of the other ethnic groups. Um, 
you know, the way that I do Quechua people who raised me. Um, but I think it is a mistake to underestimate the level of organization that can be pulled together by indigenous Andean people, like big time. Um, yeah, uh, so there's that. Um, so what roads are blocked? Well, if you want to get out of Cusco and go to other places, it sounds like that's still iffy. In some cases, some of the protesters are saying that they will give Paso Humanitario humanitarian access, which means that they may stop blocking roads altogether for a span of time so that people can get in and out. Like, let's say they need to travel from one town to another in order to see, you know, their mother-in-law who is ailing and depends on them to come through and help out on a regular basis, or they got to take somebody to the doctor, go pick up medicine or things like that. They, they will open up uh, the roads for that kind of thing sometimes. And there are talks happening where people are discussing all of that, but they are mostly local. A lot of that news gets around on the Quechua language uh, radio stations here and via social media. It's not covered in like Spanish language news, even when it is Spanish language news on social media and that kind of thing. Another thing to understand is that people have their broadcast networks and they are, you know, digital and online. And they do things under normal circumstances like you know, cover fiestas and really local news, like what's going on down at the municipality of a 3,000 person town or stuff like that. And um, now they are covering what's going on with protest efforts. And they also have like call in talk show type things where people call in and state their opinions and they discuss this. And some of those opinions can be very strong and they're very strong in every direction you can imagine and across the entire political spectrum, which is broader in Peru than it is in places like the USA. Um, Peru does have an actual left, unlike the USA, which has almost no real um, f forceful or organized uh, left to speak of. Um, and a lot of what people think of as being left in the USA, for instance, is really pretty center or even kind of a little to the right of center. Um, so yeah, so there's, there's a lot going on there, but it doesn't make necessarily even the Spanish language news. And that being the case, you got to understand it doesn't make the English language news at all. So I want to speak again to one of the things that I'm seeing said a lot in what limited English language coverage I have seen of this and um, point out that what we're seeing is not people who are hoping for the ousted president to be returned to office or far left radicals protesting. We are seeing regular people protesting. Number one, first and foremost, the number of people killed in these protests, right? Uh, Peruvians have a civil right to protest. It is protected by law. And so killing protesters is not something that they think is okay in many cases. Um, some of the more authoritarian right people think that's fine, but they do not hold a strong majority in Peru like they do in some other places in the world. Um, so yeah, so number one, killings by the government, by police, by the military of people who are protesting and wounding of those same. So we have around, uh, around 50 dead and hundreds and hundreds of wounded, which is a lot. Um, and so they're like, no, that being the case, we cannot, we cannot accept and tolerate this regime being in power while committing these acts of what people are calling widespread murder or even genocide because, um, they're arguably happening along racial and or ethnic lines, which is pretty heavy. Um, so yeah, so they, they want this government to go away. They want uh, the president to resign and for new elections to be called to happen immediately, not in April of 2024, but much sooner than that. And they also want Congress to be closed because Congress is backing all of this, right? And Congress, like there are people in Congress who are saying some... Um, I would call them outrageous things. Like there was one uh, congressperson 
who referred to the newly elected governor of uh, the region of Cusco, like the whole state you could think of, um, as being your typical illiterate peasant who manages to take hold of some power and thinks he knows what he's going to do. Um, just strong words. Um, and then there are other people uh, who are saying, well, you know, we need to um, we need to be much more forceful in our resistance and uh, try to remove this regime by whatever means um, is required. And so there's a lot of conflict. Peru is a very divided country right now. It is not um, an easy situation. Um, now, like I think I said previously, if you would have asked me on January 8th or even the morning of the 9th, if I thought, you know, things were on the upswing or improving or what have you, um, a lot of people, the vast majority of people I talked to at that point were saying things like, eh, we know that she's not going to step down. She says it like every day that she's not going to step down. And so we need to see what we can do, uh, about rolling logistically and sensibly and with calm towards really good elections and getting out of this roller coaster of, uh, corruption and graft and deadlock and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then when 19 people were killed in a matter of hours, um, yeah, people were like, no, 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 we can't, we can't just hold on to this. And so folks are kind of like, so, you know, don't people need to get back to work? Don't people need to make money and stuff like that? And the answer is yes, people really do. And this is why this is, serious what's happening here is because even a lot of the people the vast majority of people who are going out and taking to the streets right now are people who know what they're risking who know that they are risking their very lives to get out there and protest and do this kind of stuff and so um so that's that's uh, something to bear in mind also like I really hope that people can bear in mind that these are actual people. These are mothers, fathers, grandfathers, teenagers, you know, your 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 cousins, your your siblings, you know, these are these are regular people and that is who has been dying, right? Um So yeah. So it's pretty it's pretty perturbing, pretty worrisome when it comes to all of that kind of stuff. Um like it's it's stressful um and people who have resources a lot of people are putting them to use in in the struggle as it as it were so to speak for lack of a better way to put it um you know feeding people from food that they have at their restaurants that aren't really working and that will that that will go bad right um uh or or putting in some cash for gas for the convoys to Lima and all of that kind of stuff. And what people are saying is that until and unless people in Lima um, feel the pinch of these protests, uh, they don't think anything is going to change. Um, do I think anything is going to change even then? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I do think there is a limit to how long the country can hold out in this kind of uncertainty, but I don't have a clear prediction as to what the exit is going to be. So I guess I would say to folks who are traveling here anyway, which I think is still in many cases okay to do, like I think it comes down to the individual person, like what your tolerance level is for risking what is most likely going to be uh, schedule disruption and inconvenience. Um, it is unlikely to be a risk of physical danger to yourself or your person or or what have you um as a tourist right um but if so for people who are still coming you know thanks for still taking a chance on peru um you know we we need we need to keep working <laughs> right uh and also try to remember that for folks who live here this is our regular lives, right? So, um, you know, I've, I've got it pretty good, um, because, uh, my work is for the most part virtual. So I'm not out of work as long as the internet holds out. Um, but, um, yeah, for a lot of people, uh, 
best case, they're losing money, they're losing, they're losing, um, in some cases, their businesses entirely. Um, because you, you still have to pay rent, you still have to pay, you know, your mortgage, you still have to pay any loans that you have. There's no, nobody's giving you a break on any of that stuff because there's massive civil unrest. So there's all of that. And then, um, that's sort of the lighter side, the less serious, less drastic side. And in other cases, people are getting injured and dying. So like, be sensitive to that. And I guess I want to like stress that because I've seen a few people who have come as tourists who are like, well, I can't believe the military isn't getting out there and just shooting these people so that they stop blocking bridges or whatever. And dude, that's horrifying. Like that is horrifying. Like I, I can't feel good about people making comments like that on the things that I'm posting and sharing. So I wanted to stress again that I am working really hard to stay very neutral and informative when it comes to all of this kind of stuff and, um, you know, and present as much as I can about the perspectives of various different groups of people in the mix on this whole thing. Um, and I'm not here to have arguments and fights about stuff. And so if anybody wants to jump into my comments and try and start some shit, I'm going to be deleting it. Um, you can go start that in your own spaces. And that means, you know, please don't come in and say, you know, long live the valiant, valiant communist struggle. And it means don't come in and say, well, tear gas them to death. And, you know, don't do either of those things or really, or, or pick fights in the middle. I'm happy to answer questions and talk about what's going on and explain circumstances and situation, but I'm not here to take a side or to provide a platform for people to engage in trolling or potential spread of disinformation and, uh, and, um, rhetoric that incites uh, further escalation of anything. So um, all of that, just bear that in mind. Um, uh, if things go more or less as predicted, I think we will see tomorrow and maybe Wednesday be fairly open in Cusco. Thursday probably be uh, really extreme national strikes everywhere. Friday, I don't have the Friday. I don't know. And I'm guessing like, I mean, these are educated guesses, but, um, they're guesses. They're not, you know, I mean, for all I know, there's about to be a massive tear gassing going to break out outside my window, like just a, a couple blocks away or, or who knows? Like, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. So, you know, I and my family and community are living with that sort of uncertainty and whatnot. So anyway, um, yeah, if you're here in the Cusco area, you know, stay calm. Don't participate in any protests because it is illegal for you to do so as a foreigner. Um, don't try and provoke anybody and try to try to listen more than anything else, um, more than expressing what your opinions are as to what should happen in all of this, because um, it's some complicated stuff. Anyway, that is the update for today, the 16th of January, 2023. Um, more probably tomorrow, maybe a little bit in the evening. All depends on how things go. Take it easy, everyone.